Hi students, what we're going to be talking about today is the treatment of opposition by Mao, the nature and extent of that throughout his reign, so all the way from his rise to the consolidation and maintenance of his power. Bit of a summary before we get started into what happened in terms of each of these different opposition movements and how they were put down. Pre-1942, Mao's opposition is primarily focused on his ideology, so the developments of Maoism um, and cha early challenges to his leadership. Remember that he does not become chairman of the Communist Party until 1942. Uh, from 1942 to 1944, we have the rectification movements in Yan'an, land reform, uh, which is forms a part of the antis movement, so the three and the five antis movements that take place in 1951, 1952. Then we have an intensification of Mao's treatment of opposition, and we see more examples of his ruthlessness and resorts to the use of violence in order to crush any opposition during the Hundred Flowers, the Lausanne Conference, where we see kind of internal conflicts within the party. That is continued in 1962 to 1965 after Mao steps down as chairman in 1959. There is an internal power struggle in 1962 and 1965 with regards, again, to his ideology and these concepts of the constant revolution. The rise of the cult of personality is a key important element in how Mao was able to get rid of opposition. And then finally, sort of the clearest example of Mao's opposition and the treatment of that is during the Cultural Revolution from 1966 to 72. Prior to 1942, the opposition to Mao, as I said, is kind of focused on Maoism. There are a variety of different interpretations on the best way to carry out a revolution. Li Lasan um, and people like Chen Jishu, who were um, some of the founders of the Communist Party back all the way back in 1921, formed a part of a larger group um, known as the the 28 so uh, 28 Bolsheviks. These uh, pro Soviet groups were focused on. Uh, looking at criticisms of Maoism and the fact that he didn't follow the Soviet model of having an industrial proletariat which carried out revolution. Obviously, remember, Maoism is focused on shifting responsibility of revolution onto the peasants. In addition to that, we have early leadership challenges such as the Fujian incident and the Ziyi meeting in 1930 and 1935. During the Fujian incident, Mao ordered the execution of 4,000 Red Army troops whom he accused of plotting against him. Uh, these were GMD agents, um, supporters of Lysen. Um, he instructed the uh, Red Army, uh, who were loyal to him, to do not kill the important leaders too quickly, but squeeze out of them the maximum information. So again, early signs of Mao's use of violence and use of kind of terror tactics in order to uh, destroy his enemy. In the ZE conference, um, by this time, Mao had sort of gained supremacy over the military and political councils uh, through his kind of leadership, his um, education of the peasants, uh, his ability to to guide um, the the CCP, um, and then forced a showdown between the peasant and urban views in ZE of the proletariat. He accused them of adding to crisis by abandoning successful guerrilla tactics that had worked during um, the GMD um, attempts to encircle the. CCP. Mao won the vote, uh, which marked really an end of the Moscow elements in the CCP. Uh, it also problems regarding uh, the route. So Jiang Guotao urged Western advance in order to take them closer to Soviet protection, whereas Mao insisted on the original northern route. Um, Zhang attempted the southern route, uh, the western route, uh, and then rejoined after they found the path impossible, reaffirming Mao's decisions. You can see the CCP report on the process of gaining information during the Futan instance was this idea of the carrot and the stick. Um, the carrot, okay, using, trying to extract from them confessions by, you know, providing them with potential benefits and rewards. The stick, obviously, harsh punishments um, and hanging those and torturing those who didn't want to confess. He survived through this early um attempts 
and of opposition due to a number of factors. The loyalty of the Red Army commander, such as Zui Day, uh, he was an expert in knowledge of the peasants. Um, external threats, such as the GMD and the Japanese occupation and invasion of China, drew focus more to those as opposed to necessarily what was going on within the CCP during the time, um, and also his charisma. We have a great quote from Yu Li Xiaqui, um, where he says, okay, what are the elements of being a good communist? Um, and you can see there really clearly that he should forgo all personal aims and private considerations but conflict with the party's interests. At this time, the the party's interests have not yet become Mao's interests, but that will occur over a period of time in which Mao will really solidify himself as the one and the same. CCP, Maoism um, are completely together um, and going against the CCP meant providing opposition to Mao. The rectification of conduct campaign, which began in 1942 and, and ran into 1944, um, was initiated with Mao's land policy, which was a process of removing landlords and redistributing land amongst the peasants. This gave rise to the belief of revolutionary correct correctness, which w is going to become important in later campaigns as well. This is a concept that the party had to maintain constant struggle against reactionary thinking. Um, and as Mao said, liberalism is harmful in the revolutionary collective. It's a corrosive which eats away unity, undermines cohesion, causes apathy, and creates dissension. This is this idea of capitalist ways of thinking, of thinking about yourself rather than that of the party, um, of you know, sort of being more focused on your own kind of well-being as opposed to the whole of China. His aim during this rectification of conduct campaign was for party members to engage in self-criticism, okay, or struggle and to admit their errors in front of assembled party members, um, allowing with this Mao thinking of through study. So the way to rectify yourself was through studying Mao's thoughts. Um, a notable exception was uh, Wu Li, who maintained that he was loyal to Mao, and Mao himself only made very small gestures of self-criticism in 1944, some excesses allowing uh, party purges. Uh, so we see this, that the rules and opposition um, do not apply to Mao himself, even though he encourages any opposition within the CCP to sort of rectify their own errors, he himself does not recognize or acknowledge his own, his own errors of judgment or own excesses. Um, during the land policy as well, um, areas were liberated by removing landlords. Those who did not conform had crops, livestock confiscated or harsh taxes imposed on them. Um, and Maoism became a truth which all of them had to live by. Um, Mao feared those running the party may become more bureaucratic um, and a self-justifying elite, similar to what had, you know, what had been the status quo in China prior to 1942 with the GMD, the warlord area, where we see these uh, groups coming into um, ruling class and then serving their own interests and their own um, sort of their own selves prior before that of the nation. Mao in 1937 um, titles a work called a Combat Liberalism. You can see the 11 principles which good communists should abide by. They're really clearly laid out for him. So to argue, okay, to have open debate, to stand up for what you believe in, uh, to put the party before the person, to focus on the idea of, of progress, um, to rebut and report anyone who made counter-revolutionary remarks, to behave as a communist always, uh, to stand up against self-centered behavior, to plan and pour your heart into your work, to avoid narcissism, okay, so while you know holding yourself in high regard whilst being kind of slacking off in other areas and be self-aware, okay, identifying your mistakes and correcting them. These 11 principles became a guiding force for not only identifying opposition, but also trying to uh, remove that as well. The treatment 
um, that occurred during this opposition. So we have, um, it's led by uh, Kang Sheng, okay, who believed that 70% of the party were infected by these revisionist ideas. Uh, roughly about 1,000 CCP members were imprisoned and tortured. This led to roughly about 60 members committing suicide. Um, those who committed suicide faced what you might think worse punishment if they were captured by the CCP. Some key members who were attacked during this period are, are pictured here, uh, Wang Shiwei and, and Din Ling. Wang Shiwei was a scholar who criticized the CCP's coercive way of promoting communism. He wrote criticisms of members of the CCP uh, whilst the Red Army comrades were dying in the struggle against the GMD and the Japs. Uh, as He wrote an essay with the newspaper The Liberation Daily, uh, and was singled out for struggle after writing Wild Lilies, an essay that criticizes Mao's sexual appetites along with other privileges and indulgences enjoyed by high-ranking CCP members. Wang was accused of being a Trotskyite, which is the idea of uh, adopting a Soviet model instead of that of a Maoist thinking. Um, this was part of a larger attack against intellectuals. Okay, Mao attacked them for merely talking and theorizing rather than acting. He brought him in front of a show trial, which is a public hearing uh, where guilt is assumed, and accused him of anti-party thinking. He received a life sentence and, execu and was executed in 1947 um, in the most brutal of ways, um, that being he was chopped up into small bits and thrown down a well. Din Ling, who wrote in defense of Shi Wei, um, spoke out against female inequality. This was sort of a guiding force in her actually entering the CCP, was this idea of the aspirations of you know young women and thought that they would have a more equal treatment um, under communist regime. However, she was heavily critical of, of women's treatment in the CCP, um, and she was brought in part of a, of a party gathering um, and was berated and and then eventually withdrew her criticisms, um, abandoning Wang Shiwei, who she originally supported. The consequences of this rectification of conduct was that about 20% of the Politburo secretary uh, were removed. Um, it continued until 1948. Uh, 44, whereupon Mao diverted backlash onto party cadres and unit leaders, okay, and ordered an end to the torture tactics. So his attacks against opposition result in some op in result in kind of some opposition against them. The fact that he is maybe too harsh on some of them. Um, it did lay a platform, however, though, for the Hundred Flower and anti riotists and the Cultural Revolution. Um, you can see some of the sources there that really suggest um, about the methods that were used, this psychological coercion, the idea of purification, um, this idea of controlling people's thoughts, um, aspirations and actions, um, and you know how this really set in focus danger signals for what would become um, further uh, purges against opposition uh, later in Mao's rule. The Antis movement, which begins in 1951 and is a continuation of his land reform, which happens in the late uh, 1940s, um, along with his first five-year plan, where we see the redistribution of land from the existing privileged landowners okay, to the peasants. And it's a kind of egalitarianism focus, um, which is a part, core part of communism. It was instituted as a part of Mao's consolidation of power after his organizational party meant that he was a chairman under the guise of this new uh, democratic centralism. It aimed to remove class enemies. The concept of democratic centralism meant that although Mao had no formal position, um, he was chairman, um, but didn't necessarily, wasn't you know, president, um, wasn't really clear, kind of, he was more of a, of a, a supervisory role. Um, his... Rule was unquestionable. Okay, they had to listen to Mao. Democracy in the CCP meant obedience of members to authority and instructions of the leaders. The antis movement happens in two parts. In 1951, there's the three antis, which targets waste, corruption, and inefficiency. And in 1952, there's the five antis, which targets industrial sabotage, tax evasion, bribery, fraud, theft of government property. This generated an atmosphere of terror, okay, during which people were encouraged to 
collabor- to identify people who um, were GMD collaborators, who belonged to privileged classes, such as landlords. You can see in the propaganda posters that you see here that there was really the sense of um, people banding together to um, turn on their, their friends and their family um, who might be considered um, rightist or um, revisionist thinkers against Mao. The extent of this, um, as I said, is uh, was held in conjunction with the um, purges uh, of the CCP members, um, which also occurred during this period. Um, and those who were considered rightists, okay, such as Gao Gang and Rao Xu Shi, um, were also wiped out. So this is within the party as well. So the anti movement is not just within the people, but also within the party. As Mao extended control over the people, uh, which attacked as anti-socials, counter-revolutionaries, imperialists, he also consolidated control over the party, which is really vitally important to, to Mao's um, control. In 1950, um, the CCP turned on gangs and triads in Shanghai and Guizhou, um, and in Guizhou, 130,000 bandits and criminals rounded up uh, were, and over half were executed. In Shanghai, a similar process led to 28,000 dead. The registration process that happens at this time as well during the Antis movement um, also helps for the CCP to exert control over the people. They have three separate um, certificates that needed to be um, given to the people in order for them to um, be employed, to have housing, to have pension, to have uh, basic freedoms. Um, and it all depended on what files were collected over, over time. Um, so you can see that this idea of the counter-revolutionaries and using the informants throughout the, both the party and throughout society meant that we see people turning on one another in order to uh, remove any particular opposition to, to Mao. Moving on from the anti-movement into 1956 and 57 with the 100 Flowers campaign. This begins as a real reversal of what we've seen prior to this period. Mao, as you've seen, is, is very does not want this idea of democracy. He doesn't want a democracy in the what we know about the of the concept today, where we see people participating in criticisms of the government, helping it progress, uh, listening to people's ideas. Mao invites criticism, okay, during the beginning of the Hundred Flowers. Um, he allows for freedom of expression, okay? He had heard that, you know, people were, that his methods were being too harsh and that he should allow more democratic thought. Um, once that people had overcome their fears, okay, uh, you can understand why they would be fearful after everything that happened during the Antis movement, um, individuals and uh, policies were complained against on the grounds of corruption, inefficiency, and a lack of realism. The themes identified in the sources, which you can see here, uh, identified some particular opposition to the nature of leadership, the impact of foreign ideas, and corruption within the party. The key concept of the 100 flowers was, and what gives it its title, is this idea of let the 100 flowers bloom, let 100 schools of thought contend. And the way in which Mao believed that in order to progress the country, he needed to allow for more open discussions regarding how to govern China. You can see the writers, um, kind of this idea of foreign influence, editors-in-chief, college professors, student leaders. These are all intellectual members, members of um, artistic um, and scholarly communities. These became the first targets of when the 100 Flowers movement shifted. In 1957, he abandoned the campaign okay, and launched the anti writers movement. Um, we see this again, complete shift of view. Those who had called out against Mao had openly expressed their criticisms. These teachers, scientists, economists, writers, artists were forced to retract their statements. Um, and Mao describes this process as squeezing the pus out of an abscess. This idea of um, putting the intellectuals under extreme pressure in order to draw out any negative thoughts they had of the party. 
In June of 57, um, an editorial drew a line under the 100 Flowers campaign, uh, while Mao's earlier speech of the correct handling of contradictions was republished after being edited to suggest that not all contradictions could be tolerated. And you can see here about the idea of what should be tolerated. Words and deeds which had happened in the earlier 100 Flowers campaign where we see these ideas that you know it should help to unite um and to to progress the country was revised and as long as it doesn't divide and it really became for Mao a way in which to identify all the people who had negative views of him and then to completely cut them off um cartoons around this time suggest that you know Mao was behind the lawnmower as the hundred flowers grew up he came with a lawnmower in 1957 and then drove all over them. Um, propaganda posters along the time as well, savagely attack and hurt righteous elements to protect the results of socialism. And this is during a time as well where we see the five-year um, plans being enacted um, and the concept of socialism being very kind of popular during this time as well. The nature of the campaign is an estimated uh, f uh, half a million to 750 party members confessed and were publicly discredited. This means that they lost their jobs and were a smaller amount uh, were sent to re-education in camps. Um, thousands were also driven to suicide as well. Historians debate the, the true aims of this campaign as we've done in class, so whether it's a ruse or genuine or a part of a structured process, either way, the results were the same. Mao used the findings to crush anyone who opposed him. You can see historians such as Jun Chang, okay, um, this idea that, you know, everyone had started to strongly express their criticisms um, and as a result, um, it increased the gulf between the party and non-party professionals, okay? Um, and these members were destroyed. Um, you can see in the source on the left, Mao describes this idea of um, the possibility of disturbance. It should be allowed, um, but it needs to root out the cause of this disturbance. You must overcome bureaucracy, which is a rightist policy, and improve the ideological and political education. He believed that education and um, intellectuals were at the root cause of this revisionist and rightist thinking. After the failures of the Great Leap Forward, which we have covered in the other tutorial, um, we have the Lausanne Conference in 1959 which the party gathers around um, and it was originally aimed to try to come up with ideas on how to relieve the, the spreading hunger. Um, Pen Den Huai, okay, talks really um, passionately during this party gathering um, about his own experiences uh, in the countryside. Mao fielded huge criticisms, okay, namely from Peng, and as a result of the failure of the Great Leap Forward. Mao, though, is expert in redirecting this criticism. He blamed anyone but himself. He blamed the hoarding of grain by peasants. He blamed mistakes by local officials and the bad weather between 1958 and 1961. You can see on the source of the left, which is an excerpt of Mao's speech at Lausanne Conference, although he takes some responsibility, you can see where he says um, about the, the mass melting of steel, you know, this was my idea, um, and, but he then says, you know, if you agreed with this idea of, of smelting steel, then you should also be blamed, okay? The blame cannot all be my responsibility. Um, you, he then turns it on to the CCP, you know? I am the leader, but you know, this reflects you all had an idea. You all had uh, a responsibility as well. You should also think about your own stake and your own responsibility in bringing these, the horrible famine uh, in, in China. Peng uh, was dismissed as a troublemaker and his account of the famine was com uh, told to be complete fabricated. Um, and he told the applauding delegates that he was prepared to use the PLA um, against any in the party who tried to lead peasants to overthrow the government. So you can see the idea of, of Mao's real paranoia about opposition from within. Uh, talk of famine then became treasonous Okay, after Peng's dismissal. Um, and as a result, little was really done to rectify the uh, the 
famine. The Cultural Revolution does not begin until 1966, but we see the seeds of the Cultural Revolution beginning in 1962 with this power struggle between Mao. Mao steps down from chairman in 1959. He left Li and Deng um, in charge of the revival of China. These, both these men are highly successful, along with Zhou Enlai, who was a foreign minister. They had adopted capitalist views, private farming, market pricing, um, but these were bureaucratic policies. They were rightist policies, capitalist ways of thinking, and they completely undermined the collectivist principles that Mao had set out in, in his writings in, um, in Yan'an. The opposition then you can see very clearly. We have on the very right, um, Deng and Li and the group of five, who are these much more um, sort of conciliatory. They like the idea of, of inviting foreign influence. They like the idea of using capitalist policy pol policies in order to boost the economy. We have the center, and then we have the left, um, of which Mao is a part of as well. But as we were going to go and find out in a moment, um, some of these left-wing um, supporters of Mao are more Maoist and more hardline than even Mao himself. Mao, despite withdrawing from direct policymaking, um, still believed that the principles of Maoism still need to be upheld. The revolution through collectivization and political um, you know, conformity was being challenged by these new ways of thinking that Li and Deng had uh, employed. The hallmark of the Cultural Revolution is a huge wave of propaganda which sweeps across the nation. In addition to that, and probably most importantly, is the publication of Mao's Little Red Book in 1964. It was published under the direction of Lin Bao, who was the defense minister and field marshal in, of the PLA, and the book became a Bible for Maoist thinking. By 1966, 740 million copies had been distributed into key aspects of society, education, army, industry. You can see um, the idea of this uh, focus on um, the cult of personality which develops in China as a result of the, the Little Red Book. It's filled with um, Mao's greatest quotations on how to live, how to act, um, how to be more communist, how to focus on the revolution. Um, we see precious Red Book shrines um, were established on the village square or in front of local buildings. Women are, are given this and said to read it prior to having sex because then their children that they would have would become wise, is thought. So it's got all of these ideas regarding you know, dedication to party thinking. Prior to the full launch of the Cultural Revolution, we have the Socialist Education Movement, uh, which became, in 1963, a battleground for China's economic policies. The Social Education Movement, or SEM, was uh, a real clear discussion between Mao's collectivist planning and Li's liberalizing agriculture okay, by restoring private farming, the two clash of the left and of the right. Um... Officials and cadres were dispatched to the countryside to expose the reactionary melons who had prevented the GLP. Um, Li Xiaokui and wife uh, Wang Guangmei, uh, through living with the peasants, had identified corruption and collusion between local party bosses and officials sent to implement reforms. She, um, Liu had undermined the work of the SEM and drawn uh, really clear attention to, to Mao, who had berated him for ignoring peasant capitalists. Though you repeat day after day, there must be democracy. There is no democracy. Though you ask others to be democratic, you are not democratic yourself. So it really highlights the problems that um, you know Liao was presenting to him. This power struggle between Mao and Liu is a result of Liu and Deng's success in, ec in the economy during this period of time. The table on the left clearly shows you the um, variety of economic indicators which suggest that revival and recovery during China from 1962 to 1965 had been very successful. Government um, budget, which was in deficit prior to this, had become into surplus. 
um, agricultural production had returned back to 1957 levels at the at the end of the f- uh, first five year plan. Industrial growth had increased um, by uh, reached 20 percent. Oil production um, had increased by 10 times, and this ended this reliance on the use of So You can see Mao's fear of being sidelined into politics, and his a fear of not having direct control over the party anymore. This was also intensified with the Wuhan affair, which is a reaction against the play, the the dismissal of Hai Rei from office. The story uh, told, which was um, shown from 1961 to 1965, um, told the story of the court official during the Song Dynasty, who was demoted and punished after courageously defying order of a tyrannical emperor. This became... Uh, very clearly an attack on Mao himself as a subversion of um, Peng Ninhui's attack on Mao after the failures of the GOP. Thus, in 1965, a series of attacks were made against Wu, uh, resulting in him committing suicide in 1969. The Cultural Revolution begins in earnest, as I said, in 1966. Um, And its aim was... Um, to undermine um, any opposition that Mao had and to remove any capitalist, revisionist, rightist thinking. A key um, group that was attacked was the Group of Five, uh, who were these peacemakers to avoid party slips. Um, and any they were became opponents because of their moderation. Um, and it, in 1966, they were um, denounced capitalist rotors. The left-wing group, the Mao supporters, was led by Mao's wife, uh, Zhang Qing. Uh, she was a member of this gang of four. These are the groups that represent real hardliners within the party and could be considered um, more Maoist than even Mao himself. They believed that evolution and revolution was too slow, um, attacked any moderates and appealed to support from the PLA. Um, the Gang of Four called for the resignation of Xia Kui and Deng Xiaoping and uh, the cleansing of Chinese culture. This led to the establishment of the Central Cultural Revolution Group in May 1965, of which four of the met of four of the seventeen were these Gang of Four. The Cultural Revolution was officially launched in May of 1966. Um, It targeted, as I said, revisionist thinking, capitalist thoughts, Soviet collaborators or Khrushchev types and intellectuals. In mass rallies at Tiananmen Square in August, it was announced to the people in the world and accompanied by a propaganda campaign which called upon young people to fight against revisionist thinking with which the education system was currently partaking in by diverging from the revolutionary path. It aimed to preserve the power by removing opposition, obliterating the damaging record of the Great Leap Forward, ensuring continuing revolution after Mao's death. It helped to reassert Mao's control over the Politburo, which had become right-wing reactionaries in his absence, and prevent China from making the same mistakes as the USSR. You can see here of the huge propaganda campaign that accompanied the Cultural Revolution, not only in Mao's speeches, but also in posters that were put up all around universities and schools, which encouraged young people to become involved in Cultural Revolution and ridding China of revisionist ideas and and thought crime. Mao's speech, okay, really attacks the bourgeoisie, anyone who was of the privileged class, and focuses on transforming China into um, what it was originally, okay, which was in Mao's vision, this constant struggle, this constant revolution, um, and really trying to focus on giving power back to the peasants in order to overthrow any capitalist thinking. This poster, which is entitled The Hundred Clowns, really provides a clear example of the extent of the opposition who were attacked during this period of time. It features the first 39 high-ranking targets of the Cultural Revolution in the order they were purged from the government. The poster was a success and had been published in many formats and versions by many rebel organizations. Um, the artist, as I said, was is very young, and young people are really key to the Cultural Revolution, um, was a 22-year-old student um, in the Cultural Academy of Fine Arts, Wang Rulan. 
The members that are pictured, you can see the names of them are mentioned on the right. Some key ones that you should identify is um, uh, Li Xiaqui and Deng Xiaoping, who are featured in the sedan chairs up here in the back. And also um, the wife of, of Li um, on a bicycle, um, the mayor of Beijing, um, intellectuals, writers, uh, playwrights, and even members within the uh, CCP itself. No one was um, above the Cultural Revolution and above thought crime. The return to Mao in politics began in July of 1966, and his symbolic return to politics began with him swimming across the Yangtze River, um, which was the nation's life force. And it symbolized his return to, to politics and that even at the age of 73, Mao was still very much in control and, and still alive and still being able to um, contribute to the CCP. In August of 1966, Mao called a special meeting of the CCP's Central Committee and condemned revisionist thinking and called upon members to de re uh, dedicate themselves to unwavering class struggle. He downgraded Ali Shakui in party and promoted Lin Bao to second in command. The rallies that take place in 1966 are hugely successful. Over a million people in August um, gathered in Tiananmen Square, demonstrating their commitment to the revolution. Um, and you can see, again, the people who were attacked during the Cultural Revolution. Um, to crush those persons in authority who are taking the capitalist road and to criticize, repudiate, and reactionary bourgeois academic authorities and the ideology of the bourgeois and any and all others exploiting classes and transform education, literature, and art. So it really began as a cultural attack, uh, but was then broadened to an attack on anyone who had um, conducted capitalist thinking. Mao's enlistment of the young people was a conscious decision. Um, he says that we have to depend on them to start a rebellion, a revolution. Otherwise, we may not be able to overthrow the demons and monsters. We must liberate the little devils. We need more monkeys to disrupt the palace. This imagery of the monkeys is drawn from the practice at the imperial court of having monkeys um, whose uncontrolled behavior caused, caused mayhem. And that's what Mao wanted to incite, mayhem on the streets. He presented students of Qinghai University with a banner inscribed with his own hand, bombard the headquarters. Having these words given to you by the leader of the CTP, um, you know, really excited the, the students and they believed that they were doing the work of Mao. Um, examples of the process of purging uh, revisionist or neo-capitalist ideas was the four olds, the, which were ideas, culture, customs, and habits, and the great rallies, which were conducted in 1966, of which there were eight. You can see memoirs of students during this time who talk about the influence of Mao um, and this idea that people were encouraged to stand up against um, elders, you know, members of you know, authoritative members of society such as teachers, um, and it talks about you know accusing her of a lack of proletariat feeling towards her students, of treating them as her enemies, and being high-handed and expressing uh, different opinions. Um, this sweeps the nation, and um, schools and universities shut down uh, because so many um, students are on the streets um, calling for cultural um, change and uh, revising of people's ideas. The treatment that occurred, um, you can see here in the in the two key sources, um, the Red Guards had formed an irresistible revolutionary torrent, um, as it says in the source on the left. Um, they were inspired by Mao, um, and they tried to display this revolutionary thinking by thinking and speaking and acting and breaking through to people, through violence and through um, beration and persecution um, and, and torture. And they tried to clean the muck left by the old society, sweeping away any rubbish that accumulated over thousands of years of history. This 
really helped to solidify Mao's cult of personality. As it talks about in the left, you can see people's personal reactions to um, the Cultural Revolution. They believed that they were defending Mao, that they were doing the work of Mao, that um, this was they were helping to create the new China, um, and what they would they would do anything in order to support the Cultural Revolution. Some key events that you should um, identify are on the right. Um, Mao, during the Cultural Revolution, withdraws from Beijing and allows the Red Guards pretty much free reign to do what they want. Um, the CCP headquarters was attacked, denounced elders, um, and this reversal of traditional thinking of um, you know Confucius ways of thinking and this corrupt past were attacked. Temples, art, shrines were destroyed. Public transport was seized controlled the radio and television networks, attacked those who wore Western clothing, intellectuals attacked due to their privileged life, public humiliation, um, the aeroplane position, which you can see in the two images below, um, were used, um, as well as they used police and CSP minister informants to attack anyone deemed landlords, rich peasants, reactionaries, bad elements, and writers. On the left, you can see the people who were attacked um, and that were in the noose of the Red Guards. Li and Deng both became key and high-profile members of the CCP that were attacked during the Cultural Revolution. Both were accused of being spearheads of an erogenous line in August of 1966 and encouraging others to follow policies that ran counter to Mao's wishes. And they were you know, really trying to focus on um, these ideas of, um, you know, Confucius and of um, past history, which Mao you know, no longer tried to remove all elements of. Uh, in October of 1966, um, following a Red Guard demonstration, uh, they, which was aimed at them, they were dismissed uh, from positions on the ground they had adopted a bourgeois reactionary line. Attacks also extended to Li's wife, uh, Wang Guanmei, who was dragged from her residence and beaten by a mob. Lee went, underwent a series of struggle sessions okay, before being imprisoned, eventually dying in 1973 um, due to a lack of proper medicine and care for his diabetes. On the other side, Deng's son Pu Fang was thrown from an upstairs window, left him paralyzed, uh, paralyzed and Deng went, underwent public humiliation, solitary confinement, and re-education in a corrective labor camp in Jiangxi in 1969. You can see the propaganda posters which tried to attack the leading members of the CCP during this time, um, calling them scabs and renegade traitors. The Cultural Revolution, as I said, spread across the nation. The map here really gives you a sense of the way in which it spread all across China and no one was safe from, from Mao's purges. At the trial of the Gang of Four in 1980, much later on, um, they deem that the Cultural Revolution and the purges that occur approximately killed half a million CCP officials. Um, you can see the statistics here, which really highlight how many people are affected by this. Um, 300 people were clubbed to death in two days in, in Jiangxi. Um, in Guangxi, 60,000 deaths were recorded. Um, in Mongolia, Tibet, and Sichuan, thousands were killed. This is also accompanied with the property that was destroyed. Anything that represented old, outdated history was destroyed. Um, even the Forbidden City comes under attack, but only survives after Zhou Enlai used the PLA to, PLA to protect it. Um, in Kufu, in, in Shandong, which is the birthplace of Confucius, um, a group of 300 committing, committed... 6,618 organized acts of vandalism, including destruction of paintings, um, burning of books, um, vandalism of monuments, desecration of graves, and um, the destruction and vandalism of, um, of the city. The Cultural Revolution draws or begins to draw to an end in 1968 as Mao starts to come down more harshly on the acts of violence that are being committed by the Red Guards. In this new campaign, which is called the Cleansing of the Class Ranks, he tries to eradicate once and for all any signs of capitalism. Uh, the results highly effective in purging anyone who thought 
um, of um, capitalist ideas. Mao's absence from politics during the Cultural Revolution meant that others, such as Jiang Qing and Lin Bao, were blamed for the violence, and Mao became uh, a symbol for, for revolution and not for, for violence in, in China. A result of power-seeking by Lin Bao in 1971 and members of the PLA, Lin himself had to submit to self-criticism as well. So this mean by... N- n- it's not just the people who are being um, undergoing these uh, revisions and struggle sessions and, and criticisms, but also key leading members of the CCP itself. Realizing that the situation he was in, and obviously knowing firsthand about what happens to people who are um, convicted, um, Lin attempts a assassination plot against Mao. However, um, Lugo um, sister, um, his son, leaked plans to to Zhou and Lai. And in a desperate escape to Mongolia on the 13th of September, his plane crashed. The winding up of the Cultural Revolution also is a moment for Mao to send these Red Guards, who are these fanatical young people, into the countryside to try to spread Maoist thought. This was twofold. Not only did he removed uncontrollable and delinquent youth from the cities who had committed acts of violence throughout China, but he also helped to spread and reaffirm his Maoist tendencies. Um, This was not a popular thing. Many students struggled in the countryside, um, and about 12 million people moved from towns and countryside between 1967 to 72. Um, and many did not enjoy the life of 80% of China's population during this time. Um, you can see that uh, hesitant about going to up hilly areas and countryside, um, and this was because that they have enjoyed the revisionist line of education or because they've been able to overcome influences of exploiting class. Um, Mao believed that putting people through hardship and challenging people was one way to represent your dedication to the fatherland. Okay. You can see here to go to places in the fatherland where we are most needed. We go, okay. To do obedience to, to Maoist principles and Maoist thought. The culmination of the cultural revolution, um, was the death of, of Lin Bao. This, was reported to the people after his death and then followed a, uh, a propaganda campaign afterwards, which uh, was, an, was entitled Criticize Lin Bao and Confucius Propaganda Campaigns. And they represented him as a traitor who had been hatching a monstrous conspiracy. The fall of the second in command led people such as to De Yong to question the trustworthiness of the government. And in 1973, he pu- published his 10 indictments against the Great Cultural Revolution, which resulted in his arrest and imprisonments. The fall of someone so high such as Lin Bao started to raise questions in people's minds regarding, can we trust what the CCP says? Are we being persuaded by the propaganda campaigns? Um... So what Mao did was he declined the use of violence to destroy opposition um, as, as people began to question his kind of intentions um, and rethought the severity of his policies um, and there was an, an unacknowledged recognition of kind of two points about the severity of the, of the Cultural Revolution um, as well as the CCP trying to build a relationship with um, the US during this period with Nixon's... Um, journeys to to China. The last sort of acts of opposition were in 1976, uh, which was the Tiananmen incident during which demonstrators uh, memorializing the death of Zhou Enlai, one of the leading members of the CCP, turned into attacks on the corrupt government. Uh, Riot police were called to remove uh, flowers and tributes and disperse the crowd, and this resulted in some scattered violence occurring, um, and the blame was shifted onto Deng, who was then dismissed um, once again, and then he escaped to the countryside. So with this new information that you have gained from this tutorial, you should be able to now answer um, at least half of this paper two question. So the maintenance of power was dependent on successful control of opposition, discussed with reference to two authoritarian leaders. You could mention any of the points that were just discussed about how opposition were successfully controlled and how this was vital to Mao's um, maintenance of power. 
Some key tips though is obviously you must refer to two authoritarian leaders. They need to be compared throughout your your essay. Um, recommend choosing kind of key themes to to discuss and, and track those throughout. Some counterpoints could look at the role of domestic policies, the provisions of employment, the appeal of nationalism or, or foreign policy. Um, and each leader may be considered separately or thematic um, and should be you should look at to compare the control of opposition, its relative success, and finally its impact on the maintenance of power. Good luck with your essay.